Hello, friends, and welcome to our Bible study today uh, that we normally have every Sunday. And we're going to be continuing shortly in a message uh, entitled, Anointing Fall on Me. And I'm sure that's the sentiments of the heart of all of us who are believers today. We want the anointing, we want the very presence of God to engulf us, to um, uh, embody himself within us so we can do the things of God in a more perfect way. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the privilege of being here today. We thank you for your word that's forever settled in heaven. We ask that your anointing will fall on us. And in the study today, show us how to prepare ourselves so we can receive the full bounty that you have for us as believers. Today, we're going to be starting in 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, and verse 18. The Apostle Paul is speaking to us and what we're looking for in the message starting today is uh, we know what, uh, how the Lord sees us and he knows how he's identified us from uh, the creation of the world. But what we want to know today is uh, what is our requirements? How do we develop ourselves to re receive the things that God wants us to receive uh, here in the earth realm? Second Corinthians 3 and 18 reads as follows. It says, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass, and that, that term glass there is really referring to a mirror. So let's insert that in the verse. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass. So all of us this morning at some point probably looked in the mirror uh, after waking up to, to make sure that we look presentable to other people and to ourselves. And uh, so that's what's being said here, is that uh, there is a need for us to look at the details and uh, that align with the expectation that God has for us. And we look as in a mirror, and there is a reflection of what God expects, and we should look at that to see if we're in sync with what his purpose and will is for us. So again, but, with all, but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass or in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are changed. Notice this, uh, to what we see in the mirror of the Lord changes us, praise the Lord, it says here into the same image from glory to glory. We want to be the icon. We talked about the icon last week. We want to be the same kind of image, the same reflection of the Lord uh, in our lives. We want to reflect the things and the qualities uh, that are manifest in the life of Christ uh, and uh, that's manifest within his word. It says here uh, that the image that we're trying to attain to is the same image uh, from glory to glory. So the Lord expects us to have a, a development that we should go from one level of glory, excuse me, to the next level of glory in the things of God, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit is going to assist us as we cooperate to move from one level of glory and development in the things of God to the next level of glory, uh, which means that there will be a manifestation from our lives that others will see and it will be noticeable that we are in sync with the things of God. Second Peter, we're going to talk a little bit about Peter. Uh, you know, no scriptures of private interpretation. And what we find as we go to the Word of God, as we look at the various speakers in the Word of God, there is an agreement in the Word that they're uh, uh, giving us so that we can align ourselves uh, in the, the perfect will of the Lord and the anointing that the Lord has set aside can fall in us and manifest His presence in our lives. Second Peter, first chapter. Verses 3 through 11. It may take us a while to get through all the verses, but certainly uh, we'll start here. It says, in 2 Peter 1 and 3, anointing, um, excuse me, as according as his divine power, and that divine power has been referenced there, is the power of the Holy Spirit. He says, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Notice it's the divine power gives us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. That word life we talked about in a previous session uh, is a word zoe, which means the God kind of life. It's lifetime is what's embodied by it. It's the life that we're living in the here and now, the life we live in the future, and the life that we live in the afterlife. It's the totality of life that the Lord wants to endow us with and for us to understand that we're walking in. It's not just what we do today. It's what we do tomorrow. And in anticipation of us being uh, rulers that will rule and reign with Christ in the millennial reign, then during the eternity of eternities, of eternities we shall continue uh, that same um, pattern as a saint in life. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to, um, let's read it again, 
2 Peter 1 and 3 says, according as his divine power, the divine power is the Holy Spirit, which is the divine power of, of Father God. He is the third person in the Godhead, the three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, uh, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. So there's a, a unity and there's a accord in the Godhead. And so that according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So God wants to endow us with all the things that pertain to life, praise God, the totality of life, and godliness. So uh, some people will extract out the life portion and leave out the, the second uh, attribute that's, that's manifest here is godliness. God wants us to live a godly life. We can't just take the goodies and run. We have to take the goodies and then control ourselves by the godliness that God expects us to live in uh, as his representative here in the earth realm. Uh, through, through the knowledge, let's read the verse again. It's sort of a complex verse. We're going to break it down so it makes sense to everybody that's listening. It says, according as his divine power has given unto uh, us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Notice this, life and godliness through the knowledge of him. I want you to notice here that uh, the Lord never leaves his word out. And I was talking with someone uh, yesterday morning uh, in one of our men's fellowship classes. And I was telling them that uh, everything that's in the Word of God is always predicated upon the Word of God. So it's really important that we understand what His Word says. And that's from Genesis to Revelation, study the Word. And get an understanding of how God operates and how He uh, works with man in the earth realm and how He works with you. And the only way you can really get an understanding of that and insight on how God does things is by studying His Word. Uh, again, it says that uh, according, uh, this is Second Peter 1 and 3, according as his divine power and has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Notice this, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Now, uh, here it's talking about the personification of the word, which is Jesus Christ. He is a personification of the word of God. He is called the word of God. Uh, if you go back to uh, John, the first chapter, and uh, the first verse, he begins to talk about that, that the Word became flesh, and the Word, of course, is Jesus Christ, and he dwelt among us, and so he did. He condescended the Lord Jesus, who uh, is the Word of God, he condescended and became a human being so that he could fulfill the requirements of eternal redemption that Father God had established, that someone had to go and die, someone who was suitable and someone who would be representative of the Godhead had to come in sin, become a human being, down Calvary's cross to pay the penalty that can never be paid by man apart from having the endowment of the Holy Ghost in them from the, the, their beginnings. And Jesus Christ is an apt representative that came and died on Calvary's cross as the Word of God and also as very human and very God. So he represented the Godhead and he represented humankind because he came through uh, the womb of Mary and presented himself as a son here in the earth realm. Let's continue. Uh, Through the knowledge of him, the Lord Jesus, that have called us to glory and virtue. I want you to notice here that the word again is always embodied in whatever we do as a child of God. And whatever God does with us is uh, associated with his word. So he doesn't do anything apart from what his word is. The essence of his word is what drives Father God in the decisions and the things that he does for us here in the earth realm. Whereby are given unto us, so we're looking at the fourth verse here in uh, Peter, 1 Peter 1 and 4, says, whereby, that is, by the word of God, are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Notice here, we're going to talk about this and decipher it a little bit more, but what we need to understand is that the, the bounty and the benefits that God has set aside for us uh, are attained through the Word of God. So we need to spend more time meditating on His Word, practicing the Word of God in our lives so that we can reach the bounty and benefits that God is mentioning, the Lord is mentioning in His Word. If you don't study His Word, if you don't meditate upon His Word, you won't be able to have the perfect life that God wants you to have. Uh, and we talked about this in previous uh, weeks. Uh, we went all the way back to the Old Testament, praise God, in the uh, directions that were given to um, 
Joshua when he took to him as the leader of the children of Israel. And he said, that he should, the Lord spoke to him saying what he should do after Moses had, been, had died and the Lord had buried him on top of Mount Nebo. He said to him, uh, thou shalt meditate on the word day and night. And I observe to do all that's written therein. Now notice this. Then shalt thou make thy way prosperous. Then shalt thou have good success. Uh, that's in Joshua 1 and 8. So the first directive that the Lord gave Joshua, that you need to meditate on the word. And similarly today, if you want to make your way prosperous, if you want to get all of the things that God has promised us in his word, then we must meditate on his word. And notice this. The second uh, a requirement is that observe to do. Pay attention to what we just read in the Word. Observe to do all that's written therein, in the Word of God. Then thou shalt, not the Lord making your way prosperous, it's done automatically based upon your agreement with what he's already promised. And then thou shalt, thou shalt make thy way prosperous, prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So we make ourselves prosperous by doing what God has already told us in his Word. And once we do what his Word has said, then automatically he responds by giving us the things that he's promised. you got to do the word in order to get what God has promised you to have as a child of God. People think it all comes automatically. No, it comes as a response from you. You have to endeavor to live God's word uh, and to the best of your ability. And once you've done that, then you make your way prosperous. Then you'll have good success. And so many believers wonder, why don't I have the success? How often do you read your Bible? How often do you meditate upon it? How, do you, how often do you endeavor to do what it has said we should do as children of God in all this, the aspects of, of our lives? Let me read four again. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these promises that we might be partakers of the divine nature. We're partakers of the divine natures by... Um, we, by understanding and living in accordance with the precious promises which are revealed in the Word of God, that by these, the precious promises that are revealed in the Word of God, that we meditate upon, hopefully, day and night, that by these precious promises, we might be partakers of the divine nature. The divine nature uh, is the fulfillment of the promises that has been given to us uh, in the Lord's Word. Uh, the divine nature becomes an attribute and a quality of our lives because we become more and more like Jesus. We begin to align ourselves with what is expected of us from the Father God. And as a result, there's an endowment of the power of God that comes and lives within us and empowers us to do the things that are necessary for a fulfillment of what God has promised in his word. Having escaped, notice this, and the second thing that happens is you can escape what's in the world, escape the corruption that is in the world this uh, uh, place that we live in uh, is a cosmos. Uh, it's man's orderly way and more orderly arrangement uh, of doing things. And that's what happens within the earth realm. And normally not in sync with what the will and purposes of God are. Notice here, having escaped the corruption, is he, the, the Bible calls it corruption in the world through lust. And that word lust there uh, literally means in the, the Greek, Cravings for forbidden things. And that's what happens with the majority of the people today. They're craving for things that God doesn't want them to have. Things that's not good for them. Because they don't know what the will and purpose of God is because they haven't studied the Word. Haven't studied the Bible. And unfortunately today, uh, more and more people don't go to church, even though it's Zoom church, and the devil has done a job on us, and the Lord is permitting it. And I, I keep telling people this. I, I really believe that... Uh, one has to persevere to get to the things of God. Uh, it used to be very easy. Every Sunday, you just get up and go to Sunday school and go to church. You, and there was a multiplicity of churches everywhere that you can go to. And you can make your own choice about which one you wanted to attend on any given Sunday. That's not the case anymore with COVID. A lot of the churches are shut down uh, in order to cut down on a disease that spreads. It's airborne and it spreads from person to person. And so you can't just open the phone book and say, oh, I'm going to check out another church. And, and uh, that's the other thing that's underlined by what we're going through right now. Uh, how faithful are you to the church as it exists today? If you weren't faithful before, I guess the question is, why would you be faithful today? If you haven't been faithful for years, why, are you so, why would you be faithful today? So people wait around and procrastinate uh, when they're trying to make a decision about serving the Lord. And that day to serve him never comes because the devil is making it more and more difficult for us uh, to, to come together 
to build each other up, to develop in the things of God. And you have to put forth an effort. You have to pursue the things of God with a zeal that you never had to do in the past. Uh, there's nobody uh, really trying to push you to go to church now. And not too many churches are on, on the air. Like I'm on the air right now, but you, in order to hear me, you have to be on Zoom or you have to come back and have the initiative and the foresight to know it's important that you watch me on YouTube and listen and, and play it over and over and over until you get the, the message that uh, is intended for you. It used to be a lot of people could get the information from, from DVDs, and uh, uh, we don't even have the ability to, to make the DVDs now, not in the fashion which we did before, because uh, our production centers is shut down because of, of COVID. Same thing for the uh, CDs. People get CDs every week. It was just easy. You just put in your request, and it was either mailed to you or given to you on the spot. But it's getting more and more difficult to obtain the Word of God without effort on your part. And so what I'm telling you today is that this is not just a Sunday school lesson. Uh, this is not just a Bible study. This is something that's going to help you with your life because the Word is being unveiled so that you can make it a part of your life, so you can clothe yourself in the Word of God and become more and more like Jesus from glory to glory as we open with. Praise the Lord. Let's continue the verse. Let me read it again. Uh, faith by, comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So that's why I'm reading the Word of God repetitively over and over again, so you can get it. Praise the Lord. Again, uh, we're in uh, the book of Peter. Peter was a very uh, outspoken apostle, and uh, he learned some things uh, just watching Jesus. And at the end, he converted and changed into whom we're reading about right now. Second Peter 1 and 4 and it says, whereby, that is through the word of God, are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Through the word of God, we get to exceeding great, and those exceeding great and precious promises. That by these, ye might be partakers of the divine nature. So through the word of God, the divine promises are made available to us. Uh, notice this, that, so that we can partake of the divine nature, the goodness and the promises of God are meant for us as believers. And uh, what we're trying to do today is show you how do you possess them? How do you take uh, uh, the promises of God and make them a reality in your life? And we're building up to that right now. Having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust, the devil is always there to tempt you just as he was in the Garden of Eden. And he tempted uh, Adam and uh, he tempted Eve. The Bible says Adam really wasn't tempted. He knew what he was doing and that's unfortunate. Because he could have protected his wife. He could have protected all of hum humankind simply by uh, standing in the position God has given him as the God of this world. Instead, he kept his mouth closed. He was mum. He allowed the devil to perpetrate his lie. He allowed his wife, who didn't understand fully the things of God, to hear and to respond and partake of the forbidden tree. And then he, wondering what would happen, although the Lord had told him what would happen, partook of the tree, knowing that it was against God's will, and the whole society fell, and the death reigned from that point on humankind until Christ came to relieve us from the, the stain of death uh, in our lives. And that's what we're talking about now. How do we get back to where we're supposed to be as sons of God, as joint heirs with Jesus Christ, seated with him in heavenly places, far above all principalities and power, and knowing that the devil is beneath your feet by what you've read and uh, by the prompting of the Holy Spirit, that also governs how you feel and how you sense things, that you have, you are a conqueror, that you do have authority over principalities and powers. And uh, nothing shall by any means harm you if you're a child of God. Let's continue with the verse. Having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. And that is a, a whole host of things that are lustful that we shouldn't partake of as believers. And we need to resist the devil. And uh, humankind is filled with negative cravings that we shouldn't... Uh, fuel and, uh, and uh, turn off whatever they're saying that's contrary. Don't listen to it. Uh, it'll poison your inward man. If you hear too much of it, it'll become your nature, part of your nature. And you'll accept it as something that is, sat is acceptable here in the world. There's a lot of things that people do in the world that are not acceptable to Father God. So uh, we need to learn how to reject him, the cravings that the devil tries to get us to, uh, to ingest to make a part of ourselves. Uh, we need to be... Uh, uh, deal with the word of God so we can resist the devil as James says and he shall flee from you and if you're in, in, in embracing him embracing the things the devil says he's not going to flee from you he's going to get closer and chummier with you 
the things that you shouldn't be doing or even thinking about, you're going to think about and you're going to do. Praise God. So the best thing is just resist the devil. And anything that's not of God, just repel it. And don't let it be a part of uh, the things that you embrace and the things that you do. Ephesians, we're going to go back to Apostle Paul now. Uh, we saw what Peter had to say, and it's certainly in sync with the things that's been uh, shared with us by the Apostle Paul. So let's go back to Ephesians, the uh, fourth chapter, verse 17, 24, the Apostle Paul speaking. It says, um, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord. So here the Apostle Paul is telling us, I'm going to share some things with you, and the testimony that I'm giving you is uh, from the Lord. That you henceforth walk not, there he is again, as Gentiles walk. And those are people who were not Jewish. They were uh, the people who had no covenant relationship with the Lord. And Paul's job was to preach to the uh, Gentiles, those who never had, had never had a relationship with the Lord, as Israel had, uh, who were the people of God. And so the Lord opened it up to Apostle Paul for him to preach the message to those like me, I'm a Jew. I'm not a Jew, praise God, naturally. I'm a Jew spiritually because of me embracing the teachings of uh, prophets like the Apostle Paul and embracing the Word of God and living the life as a child of God. So once I embraced Jesus as Lord, uh, I became a, a son of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. So then the promises that fall upon Jesus, who's a representative of the Israeli race, praise God, really today, uh, that endowment comes upon me, unless it's specifically identified as Israel only, then all the benefits and bounty that comes to those who are Jews indeed, the Apostle Paul talks about us in those terms, I'm really a Jew. Jew indeed means that I'm really a Jew, because I have aligned myself with the blood uh, that was shed by Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. And if you haven't aligned yourself with the blood and the things that come as a result of Christ shedding his blood, then you're not really a Jew indeed. Uh, you can be Jew because of natural heritage, but you won't be a Jew because of what has happened on the inside, not because you've uh, identified Jesus as Lord and made yourself a believer uh, by uh, aligning yourself with the Word of God and confessing Him as the Lord of your life today. Uh, Ephesians 4 17 again. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord. Apostle Paul was speaking again that you henceforth walk not as other Jews walk, or other Gentiles. So he's saying there needs to be some kind of boundary, uh, there needs to be some rules that govern how you walk. And even though in the past you as a Gentile did what you wanted to do that was contrary to the things of God, you, you didn't even have any conception about God and didn't care about what he said and how he wanted us to govern our lives. He said he's implying here that we have a responsibility to align ourselves with what is said in God's word and not in accordance with what society, represented by us being Gentiles, being a part of the cosmos, would say about how we should live our lives. There's a whole host of things that are embraced by this society that are contrary to what God says in his word. But you wouldn't know that unless you study his word, unless you hear a message that's preached by an anointed person of God. Uh, if you don't go to church and you don't read your Bible, you have no way of knowing what God's will and purpose is for your life. Notice here, um, walk in the vanity of their minds. So it's saying here, let me read it again, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles. And he said, they're walking in the vanity of their minds. That word vanity is a fascinating word. And I looked it up in the Greek. And what it means really is uh, inutility. Inutility. In other words, they're not expending any effort to do things the proper way. They just go along with the flow. Whatever acceptable to man they do it and don't stop and say, is this in sync with God's will and purpose for my life? Is this in sync with the word of God that I took my, out time to study and read? Uh, am I aligning myself with God's will and purposes or am I aligning myself with what man is trying to get me to do? Inutility. It also means transientness. And uh, let me just give you an example. Um, it means you're outside of bounds. Uh, you're doing things your way. Uh, any way you want to do it. There, there's nothing that governs you. And if we look at our society, we have a lot of homeless people. Actually, in, back in my day, they didn't call them home. They called them transients. Uh, people just went from one place to the other, uh, didn't have any goals in life, just lived on the street, um, only made enough money to survive for that day, uh, didn't endeavor to better themselves with the rules and regulations required in society. Uh, they didn't take the time to go to school, 
uh, they didn't go to college. Uh, they acted up, a lot of them that were in school, and they ended up as a transient as a result of that. Uh, the families doesn't uh, embrace Jesus as Lord, so they had no rules that the kids could live by other than the, what the, the, the cosmos presented. And any and everything was accessible. You're okay, I'm okay. And so uh, they come up with this, this uh, thought process that says, everybody's okay. You do your thing, I do my thing. They used to have a song back uh, in the day. You do your thing, I do my thing. And then they used to put a crescendo in it saying, bang, bang, bang. And that's what happens. Uh, it's a bang, 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 an explosion in the life of those who haven't done things properly. There's all kinds of chaos that they run into because they're, they're living a transient life. They don't have anything that controls them that is uh, worth a dime uh, to align themselves with the things of God. Certainly, the things of God are unknown to them, unknown to a lot of them, and they don't live their life in step with the things of God. Moral depravity is another term for uh, vanity. Uh, there is no morals that's based on a standard. You know, it's a standard they make themselves. And so a lot of people live in that way today. In any and everything goes. Uh, they have very few things that the uh, boundaries that they can't cause, cross. And if sometimes they'll, they'll pass a law to do things, you know, when you're going around killing people and things of that nature. But anything short of that uh, is probably acceptable. Any kind of behavior that is gross and contrary to God's will and purposes is accepted by our society today. They voted and legislated in and fight you if you try and take it out. Praise the Lord. And that's, that's the nature of man. He's a transient uh, from the things of God. You know, he's alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and don't want to come into the things of God. So they're going to stay outside. So the, when we say commonwealth of Israel, we're talking about all, not only being uh, associated with the things of God, but all of the bounty that comes through being a citizen of heaven. And uh, so they're not able to get that because they don't want to submit to the rules and regulations required to be called a citizen of, of the kingdom of God, a disciple, one who is a follower of the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not a disciple unless you follow his teachings or assent to it. You've got to do both. Assent, that means you're in agreement with it, and then you follow up with your behavior uh, in line and in sync with what God has told us in his word. Um, the other word that came up here that I thought was fascinating says uh, in, in Ephesians 4 and 17, notice here, let me read it again. This I say, therefore, Apostle Paul speaking again, testify uh, and testify in the Lord that his for walk not, he's given us an instruction here, as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. So we talk about the word vanity, and that mind there is the word noose. I thought that was interesting. I, I won't get into the, the examples that go along with it. Uh, the mind here can hang you. I'll just say that. If you don't, uh, if the thoughts that you have are not in sync with the things of God. Uh, it, it probably is from a word that, it means intellect. It's from uh, Greek word genosko, and uh, it, it's mind, it can be divine or human mind, so it can go both ways. Is your mind uh, in, in alignment with the things of the divine thoughts of uh, the Holy Spirit, or is your mind in sync with the thoughts of the cosmos? So it can go both ways, just depending on which direction you've gone and what decisions that you made. It's the intellect that governs what you do, uh, your feelings and uh, your will are all driven by whether it is something that came from the divine, from the things of God, from the word that you've been reading, or something that came from the cosmos, what's been perpetrated and uh, scattered and dispersed by uh, mankind, uh, as I said before, normally contrary to what God's will and purposes are for us as human beings. It's whatever understanding you have. See, your understanding is based upon your intellect, based upon the things you've been listening to. And the understanding, uh, most of the time, if you're not listening to the, the Word of God or the things of God, it's going to be contrary to uh, the Lord's will and purpose for we who are human beings living in the earth today. Let's go to the 18th verse. Uh, this is, um, again, Apostle Paul speaking in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, 18th verse, saying, Having the understanding darkened, He's talking about those who are being led and governed by the cosmos. Those whose intellect and understanding has been warped by the things of humankind. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated, he's here Paul saying, they're alienated from the life of God. You know, if you allow this world to drive you, 
and having allowed the word of God and the things of God and the principles of God to, to govern you, then you are alienated from the life of God. I mean, you're an alien from the things of God. It's amazing to me to hear people talk about the things of God who have no comprehension or conception of who God is or who His Son is or who the Holy Spirit is. Uh, true, the ignorance. The Bible talks about ignorance. Let's again, again, let's read it. 18th verse. Having the understanding darkened. So those who are not aligning themselves with the things of God, they are not enlightened to do things God's way. It says, having alienated, they've been alienated from the life of God. So the life that God wants us to have uh, if one has submitted himself to the way of this world, um, will cause you to be alienated from the Lord. Uh, through the, and it's through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their eye, uh, blindness of their heart. So things can be presented to these individuals, but they can't comprehend them because their, uh, their heart is blinded. So and that will have an impact upon their mind and their intellect and how they think. The heart can't see. Uh, from the vantage point of what the word is and what the things of the devil are. Uh, they can't see because of the darkness that has engrossed him. You know, Paul talked about it at the very beginning there, uh, 18 verse, having the understanding, there it is, darkened. The people's understanding is darkened so they can't comprehend the things of God. And I'm sure you've encountered those people who are totally void of any knowledge of spiritual things. And they've been multiple generations, as I talked about this, have gone by so it's embedded in the thought processes and the way that they do things. Praise the Lord. So understanding, which is the mind again and the, their disposition of the individual. And the implication is uh, their understanding that we've talked about. And that darkness is always associated with the things of the devil. And, uh, and darkness is, is ignorance. You're not aware of things that you should be aware of as a human being. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 4 and 23. And being renewed in the, the spirit of your mind. So uh, the apostle uh, Paul is telling us that what we need to do is be renewed in the spirit of our mind. And uh, that word there, spirit, of, is, uh, has to do with our mental disposition in the context of this particular uh, verse. Ephesians 4 and 23, and being renewed in the spirit of our minds. The Lord wants us to get the things of God down under our belt and to begin to live for him. Uh, he makes it available uh, to many of the churches do declare the word of God at a simplistic level that will at least get you saved. And there's some other things that are required so that you can be developed to get the full bounty that God has set aside for we who are believers. So some, whoever the pastor is has to preach that. Whoever the ministers are, you have to preach the whole council the Apostle Paul talks about, as Paul did. That means that they can't pass and jump over certain portions uh, that are in the writings of people like the Apostle Paul. They've got to declare it uh, to those who attend their church so that the people can take it, meditate upon it, make it a part of their lives, and begin to exercise it so they can get the benefit at another whole level in the things of God. Benefits that are set aside for we who are believers that are waiting for us once the understanding comes once knowledge comes, that's supposed to be imparted to us by those who are instructors and teachers in the church. And if they're not doing that, uh, some of them, unfortunately, are, are agents of Satan who plan not to declare certain things so that we can't grow uh, to a certain level within him. Praise the Lord. And so um, there's a number of things that I mentioned here. Let's get to this. I want to read this last verse here because we're going to run out of time in just a minute. Um, this is, um, praise the Lord, Ephesians 4. And 24, the Apostle Paul again speaking, and that ye put on, so he's asking us to do some additional things. Uh, he, he talked about that we need to be renewed in our mind. That word renewal we talked about before means to renovate. To renovate, uh, in other words, get rid of those thought processes we have that are in our mind and in our spirits. Notice here, renewed in the spirit of our mind. We need to be renovated in our mind and also in our spirits and seek with what God wants us to put there. We need to take out things that are there, uh, break it up and toss out all the garbage that is in our mind and replace it by the thoughts and the ideals of Father God. Let me read it again, 24. Uh, and that ye put on, notice that put on means to be clothed with. Uh, the new man. There's a new man that we're supposed to put on when we embrace Jesus as Lord. We have to discard the old man. Which after God, listen, which after God is, uh, is created in righteousness and true holiness. Uh, there is a true holiness that we're to embody and embrace as children of God. 
And we learned that by studying the Word and being in a form in a church that declares the whole counsel of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and those who genuinely try and align themselves with the will of God and the purposes of God that have been released in His Word and live that life before you. And you could tell who's living for the Lord and who's living for the devil. Uh, some of the things are so gross and so visible for people who call themselves believers but who really are not. So we need to line up, learn what God's Word says and see who's aligned themselves with it and then endeavor to attend that kind of a church so you can grow to the full stature of Christ Jesus. Uh, you need to imbue yourself, imbue yourself with the garment of the Lord Jesus Christ. We were looking through the mirror. We, talk, we started with that. We see, we see his attributes and his qualities and the mirror of his word will show you how the Lord Jesus looks and how we're supposed to be an icon of Christ, a representative of him, uh, that we should look like Christ and carry ourselves like Christ and we do that by studying his word and doing the things that the word directs us to do. This time we're going to open the uh, line up for those who have questions and uh, we'll pursue them at this point. So uh, now we can open up the uh, microphones so you can ask me any questions you might have for about the next 10 minutes and I'll endeavor to, to answer them. Uh, do we have any questions at this point? I'll give you another few seconds. So unmute yourself if you've got any questions. The one that's responsible for this program here, they, they unmute you so you can, uh, but you have to unmute yourselves. So you have the ability to do that. If you've got any questions, uh, this is a good time. If you say, I can never reach the pastor. I can never ask my questions. Well, you have a chance every Sunday for about 10 minutes to ask me questions directly. And I'll do my best to answer, and if not, I'll come back in the subsequent meet week and answer the question and integrate it in the lessons that have been taught uh, during that week. Uh, like you've all been nurtured and taught up in the things of God. Invite somebody who's not going to church. Give my Zoom number. Let them call in so they can hear the declaration of the word. So the questions, I'm sure they have many questions. They can ask someone who's equipped to respond. I am equipped to respond. Are there questions? You have a question. It looks like Brother James Simmons. Oh, Brother James Simmons. Go ahead, Brother. <laughs> yes, Pastor. Uh, yes. The question is that, you know, you have comedians and they may start their act acknowledging God, but then they're cussing up a storm. So the conflict is, who are they really serving? They're serving Satan, brother. They're not saved. The Bible says, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. And if it does, then you have to repent. And if you're regularly talking, cussing, and all of that, uh, a child of God is not supposed to do that. We are uh, following darkness, and they're, they're in darkness because they haven't studied what the Word says. And they're not going to a church that will cause them to want to live a lot like the Word of God says. So we have so many uh, contrary doctrines that do not sync with the Word of God that gives people liberty to live for the devil, to straddle the fence, make a confession that Jesus is your Lord, but then live your life like the devil is your Lord. Uh, so, there's, you know, I, I open just simply by saying no corrupt communication should come out of our mouth. So uh, they find that one verse. And go and uh, begin to live it. And if you don't live that, then there's a host of other things that the Lord tells us not to be a part of. We're talking about the lust of the flesh, and we're talking about the cosmos. See, they're part of the cosmos, and they probably need to change their livelihood to something else. Whoa, 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 it's terrible, Pastor. You know, they've just prepared and they're funny and all that. Well, they're going to have to clean up their act. And there's a number of clean uh, uh, comedians. They may not make as much money, but how much money do you need to make? Uh, the one I'm thinking about, he's doing pretty good. You know, he can go wherever he wants, and uh, he always has his docket clean and filled. But he doesn't curse at all, ever. And so, uh, not, not in the public. So you can make it. You may not make the millions that you're making, but hey, uh, our life does not consist in abundance of the things that we have. And so we have this contrary doctrine that's taught by pastors about, you know, having the best car and, and having multiple cars and multiple houses. Uh, that's not of God. I mean, you know, you can have that if God blesses you with it, but it's not something we're supposed to endeavor to pursue. There's a whole host of other things that we're supposed to pursue as believers, and uh, that's where we have our problems, is that we're trying to align ourselves with the world who hates us instead of aligning ourselves with Christ. And maybe being a comedian is not something you can handle and keep your mouth clean. If not, then you have to go get yourself another job. And if you're eloquent and you're smart and you're funny, make an excellent salesperson. I mean, you could, uh, without cussing, 
You can uh, talk to the customer and, and make more money that way. There's a host of ways in which if you're a comedian, you can make the money, maybe not as much as some of the, what the devil's going to give you, but enough where you can sustain yourself in an acceptable way. Okay, brother, did I answer that question? Uh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hello. Thank you for listening to this resource. If you would like to receive our audio DVD catalog or desire more information about our ministry, you may write to us at P.O. Box 612-822, San Jose, California, 95161-2822. Or you may request information via our website at www.com sjwofcc.org. We look forward to hearing from you. God bless you.